Hello and welcome, Richard Schneeman here talking about Rake. Rake is a multi-purpose tool for running scripts. We can use it with Ruby or we can also use it with Rails. Rails uh, uses Rake for quite a few things. Um, we can also use it without Rails. If you are in a project and you want to get a list of all Rake tasks that have a description on it, you can call Rake-T. Here I've gone to a Rails project and run Rake-T. And then that's the output. Uh, these are all different rake tasks I can run. I can call, run rake about, rake assets clean, rake assets precompile, rake uh, db create, rake db drop, uh, and and you know some of these things we've done before. We've run rake db migrate, and this is why it was a rake command rather than a Rails command because we were using the rake tool in order to run them. So in the last video, we talked about creating a script using the CSV library to read in data from a Excel spreadsheet and um, import that into your database. So uh, we also mentioned that we can do that by creating a rake task. How, how exactly do we make a rake task? So inside of Rails, we already have a folder just for this, just for making rake tasks. So it's going to be in lib slash tasks. And then you're just going to name it something.rake. So here we have named it import.rake. When we start out, we are going to start out by declaring a namespace. And uh, this is so that we don't have conflicting, uh, conflicting named uh, rake tasks. So here I have decided to namespace this import. So once I've done that, I can then add a task into my rake file. And the name of this task is data. Uh, and note, we do have data hash rocket environment. So, so what this is saying is it's actually telling us that before we run the data task, it, we need to run the environment task. And you might say, okay, well, you know, wait a second. We, ha we don't have any, I don't see any tasks named environment here. Uh, well, environment happens to be a rake task that Rails gives us. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to load all of our models and everything that we would normally uh, n be able to use whenever we have a Rails console open. So if you don't run environment, then you won't have access to, if you won't, don't run this task before uh, you run your task, then you won't have access to those models and active record and, and all that good stuff that uh, Rails loads for us. So um, again, that's where the environment is and we are saying to run it uh, the, the by saying data, um, hash rocket environment we're actually saying run environment before we run data and we if you wanted to we could run multiple tasks but in this scenario we only need to run one so um, we can also add an optional description to our rake task so here we are saying that the import data task is going to import data from a csv file and if you want your task to show up when someone runs rake dash t then this is important or it won't um, so all of my important rake tasks, I like to add a nice little description. It's also helpful for any new developers coming onto the team um, so that they can they can see those tasks and, well, they'll have a little bit of a better idea of what we're using them for. So now that we have all of this set up, we need to actually add code. So uh, in the last slide or the last section, we talked about requiring our CSV library and then iterating through a CSV and building products, we can just take that code and actually just straight up, uh, we can copy it inside of this task. So now we've got our rake task built. We, we have a namespace of import, a task name of data, and then we have all of our code inside of that. Um, how do you actually run that though? So you can run rake import data, and we got the import from the namespace, and then um, it's then colon, and the task name is data. So this is how we're able to differentiate different rake tasks. So in the past, you have run rake db colon migrate, and that's where that comes from. db is actually a namespace, and then migrates the actual task name. So maybe, maybe that might help clear things up just a little bit. In general, you can put one-off scripts in rake tasks or, or common items, things that you, you just need to run once or once every so often, but aren't going to be tied to a um, the 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 HTTP request round trip. It, you know, these aren't things that are going to be fired off when someone um, hits a certain URL of your application. They're just something you want to run. In in this scenario, we're adding uh, different 
different uh, products into our database from a CSV, and we only have to do that once. Uh, so it's, it's well, you know, when it works right, so we only have to do that once. Um, so it's nice to put those scripts into a rake task. It's uh, just convenient and gives us uh, some extra little things in terms of we can add those descriptors and see all of our different rake tasks, and we can also um, have d dependencies. So we're not going to, we are going to run the environment rake task before we run ours. And, you know, that's just nice. All right, the next section we are going to briefly talk about Ruby Gems and Bundler. Stay tuned.